now that on the we're on the verge of sentencing, so we're, we're just getting close to actually seeing uh, Claire Claire Bronfman being sentenced, what happens anytime that you go into criminal court and you're going to be sentenced for a crime, what you first do is what's called a change of plea. So when you start a criminal case, you're investigating the case. So you enter a plea of not guilty. You say, I'm not guilty. That's going to give you all the time in the world to fight the case. You know, get the, get the discovery, get your police reports, your officer's notes, your body camera footage like we just saw. Everything that the government has against you, you want to start obtaining those things. In this case, we're talking about you know, significantly complex financial transactions, uh, visa documents that have been filed with the U.S. government and all sorts of stuff. So she enters a plea of not guilty. Then when it, when a deal is worked out, so for a year and a half or several years, she had a, she had her team of, of attorneys who were working a deal out with the prosecutor's office. So they entered into this agreement, which sounds like it may be somewhat broad. So uh, the, the government is asking for five years and the judge can go less than that or the judge can go more than that. So it sounds like they were kind of, uh, they're leaving some of the sentencing components up to the discretion of the judge, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So when the judge has that ability to have a sentencing range to sentence you to the max or to the minimum, what the defense team will do is they'll submit what's called a sentencing letter and a sentencing recommendation. So in this case, Claire Bronfman actually wrote a sentencing letter basically to try to mitigate and to try to persuade the judge to give her the least harsh deal possible possible. Now, do I think she actually wrote this? I certainly do not. I think her team of attorneys helped her craft this. And uh, I can say that because I've done many of these. I've done many sentencing letters, sentencing recommendations, formal motions, uh, advised many, many clients on how to write a good sentencing letter or a sentencing recommendation. And so what I'm able to see here are a couple things that I think are going to be problematic. And I don't have the whole letter because it is a long letter. You can find that over at frankreport.com. Actually, here is the link to it, frankreport.com. Let me get rid of myself so you can see where to go on that. This is this has her whole letter there published. I think he was the original uh, source of where this came from. But a couple things. So you would think that somebody who's going to be going through a sentencing process in federal court who has a, a, a potential time for up to 25 years in prison, you would think maybe that they would be remorseful and they would disavow the groups that they were a part of that contributed to the illegalities that they were committing. She doesn't do that. Claire Bronfman doesn't do that. She says, many people, including most of my own family, believe I should disavow Keith and Nexium, and that I have not is hard for them to understand or accept. However, for me, Nexium and Keith greatly changed my life for the better. Most of my teenage years in the early 20s, I was ashamed of who I was, constantly focused on my shortcomings and ridden with self-hate, which I can understand all that, right? I think most people go through that phase when they're in their 20s and their teenage years. Most people they go through a period like this. And she said, Nexium changed that. I learned a sense of who I am beyond my faults and the tools of how to transform things and so on. I started to embrace myself and turn outwardly to care for others and help others. Yes, most people go through this process in their lives. Most people, however, don't have $100 million that fund a sex cult, that fund uh, commodities investments to the tune of $67 million, that sign visas for people traveling across state uh, uh, government borders, across countries, in order to go into a sex cult. They also don't fraudulently, I mean, you, you don't fraudulently set up up, uh, credit cards or bank accounts so that you can hide taxes. We all know what it's like to feel a little inadequate, but not all of us know what it's like to spend $100 million on a sex cult. So that, you know, the fact that in her sentencing memorandum, she's essentially not saying, she's saying, you know, I'm not going to disavow Nexium. I'm not going to disavow Keith. That's a little troubling. She even says that she's not going to disavow the DOS. So she goes on to say that the group that was branding people and forcing people into these master servant sort of dynamics and was gathering all this blackmail evidence against them, she's not going to disavow that portion either. She says, people also believe I should have disavowed DOS, but from the information I had, it did not make sense for me to do so when I found out about DOS and with the blog, the Frank Report reporting many accusations. There were certainly things I was scared by and questions I had about it. However, I never assumed that, uh, well, I never assumed, hang on. I never assumed uh, uh, bad intent. It's, so I asked a few of my friends to help me understand it. I was never told about anything sexual or damaging of any nature. And I was assured by them and by professionals that there was no harm being done. No one was being forced to do anything. And to the contrary, people were experiencing improvements in their life through their membership in DOS. So, you know, did she not know about the brandings? Did she not know about the transportation of people from Mexico into the United States in order to go into these things? I'm going to guess that this is another 
case where somebody who was highly involved in criminality is getting a sweetheart deal because of their connections, because of their power, because of their influence, and they also deserve to be held accountable. They deserve to be held to the same standards that you or I do. Just like cops should be held to the same standard, prosecutors, judges, politicians, so too do the ultra wealthy because unfortunately they're living in a little bit of a different strata when it comes to the justice system. And I am a capitalist, by the way. I love capitalism and I think it's a great system, but that doesn't mean you get to buy your way out of our justice system. That's not okay. So, you know, we're going to see what happens on Wednesday. We're going to see if the judge buys it or not and how the judge is going to actually end up sentencing her. I do, we, I've done many sentencing hearings and sentencing recommendations and judges typically don't like what we just saw. They want people to be remorseful. They want people to disavow themselves from the groups that they were a part of previously. Otherwise, there's a likelihood for recidivism, likelihood that this person is going to do it again or hasn't learned anything. And so if you read the full sentencing memo, you're going to see that there is a lot in there about talking about her low education. She says, I'm going to go get my GED. You know, I'm not that smart. So I didn't know what was going on. That's put in there by her attorneys. You know, let's tell, hey, let's remind the judge that you're not too bright. You didn't know any better about this stuff. You know, you didn't know you shouldn't have done that. And so that's, you know, all these little ways that they're crafting this sentencing recommendation. They're trying to do the best they can, but they're being dealt a tough case because she is not willing to show remorse for being a part of the group. She's saying, I'm sorry they were hurt. I'm sorry that this happened to these people, but by and large, they were good organizations. Nexium was good. DOS was good. I can't disavow either of them. So judges typically don't like that. You know, the judge may read that and say, okay, well, this person is actually not all that sorry, you know, and the judge can weigh the evidence, weigh the government's arguments, weigh the defense arguments, and then come to a conclusion. That will be happening on Wednesday. So we'll have an update probably on that show uh, on Wednesday. So if you're not already subscribed, make sure that you are subscribed.